Hop along, Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hop Along Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And now, another exciting story of the early West. Dead or Alive. Right now, after competing in the big rodeo at Amarillo, Hoppy and California are headed back toward their home spread, the old Bar 20. With two more days of riding ahead of them, the country becomes wilder and more desolate with each passing mile. But their hearts are light and their spirits gay, for Hoppy has won most of the roping and riding events, and there's folding money in their belts and silver in their jeans. Hoppy, when them waddies back in the bar 20 hear about that new bulldog and record you set, there'll be a hot time in the old town that night. <laughs> hey, what do you pull up for, Hoppy? Looks like another group of riders crossed the trail here. Look at those hoof prints, California. Made right reason, too. Yeah. A, a bunch of them. Maybe a dozen. More than that. Looks like the same bunch whose trail we crossed some miles back when we hit the foothills. Yeah, probably some wranglers rounding up strays. You know better than that. You don't ride bunched up like this looking for strays. Oh, well, let's go. Well, whoever they are, those riders must be looking for something, but not cattle. Well, I guess we'll hit town a red dog before sundown. We'll bed down for the night there. He shoots me. I never crossed this range myself. You seem to know it right well. Well, I ought to. I did a bit of prospecting around here quite a few years back. Me and my old partner, Hardshell Hank Brady. Who? Hank Brady. We called him Hardshell because he sure was a tough nut. Temper like dynamite, but a heart of gold. I teamed up with him soon after his wife died. He had a little boy, a nice little fellow. Oh, well, who took care of him? Oh, Hardshell used to hire a squaw from one of the tribes around here to look after him while we moseyed around these hills looking for pay dirt. He must have been nine or ten years ago. I've never forgotten that kid. Tough little hombre. <laughs> Just like his pa. Hey, hey, did you two ever strike it rich? No, never did. The country's pretty well mined out. The best vein we ever hit petered out fast. We split up soon after, and I went back to cow punching. Well, what happened to old Hardshell? Nothing but bad luck, I'm afraid. I heard later he got into a fight and killed a man. They sent him up for life. Oh, tarnation. That's tough. What happened to his little boy? I've often wondered, California. Never could find out. I wrote Hank up at the state pen a couple of times, but never got an answer. That's a long time ago. Listen... That's coming from across that mountainside. Yeah, something's going on. Those riders whose trail we've been crossing. A hunting party, maybe, huh? Could be. Funny that many of them are all hunting together. All depends. What do you mean? On what they're hunting. If they are a hunting party, there's only one kind of game they could be looking for. And the way they're organized, I don't think it's coyotes or mountain lions. No, me neither. They're looking for a man. Right. Well, ain't none of our business. I wonder. Let's go, Topper. Hoppy, this country's getting wilder by the minute. You sure you know where we're going? California, I know this territory like I know the inside of the Bar 20 bunkhouse. I... Oh. Mm. What is it? Find those trees ahead of us, to our right and left. Looks like we've met up with that hunting party. Hoppy, quick. No, don't touch your gun. They got us covered. We certainly have. One bad move out of you two memories, and we'll blast you to kingdom come. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Dead or Alive. <laughs> Hoppy in California are riding home from a rodeo where Hoppy won a considerable sum of prize money. The two cowboys are waylaid and captured by a large gang of horsemen. 
As their leader rides up to take their guns, Hoppy sees the star pinned to his vest and recognizes him. Sheriff Thompson, what do you think you're doing? Keep your hands up. Don't you remember me? Well, I'll be. Old Hank Brady's partner, Hop along Cassidy. That's right. Come on, gone. Of course I remember you. It's all right, boys, I think. You better be sure. Don't be tricked, Sheriff. Say, what's going on here, anyhow? Sheriff, this is my partner, California Carlson. If you don't mind, we'll lower our hands. I suppose you tell us first what you're doing back in this neck of the woods. Well, we're heading home from the rodeo in Amarillo. Who do you think we were, anyway? We figured you might be two of the convicts that broke out of the state pen a couple of days ago. Convicts? Yeah, there was three of them headed for these hills. Funny darn thing you turning up just about this time, Cassidy. What's so funny about it? Well, one of those escaped convicts, in case you didn't know, is your old partner, Hardshell Hank. Brady? You mean he... That's what I said. He and two mighty mean killers, hombres that should have been hung long ago, broke out together. They killed the guard and led out for this territory. I figure they're holed up somewhere around here. We trailed them as far as the foothills. Killed a guard. Well, Sheriff, I'm mighty sorry to hear Hank Brady's mixed up in this. He'll hang for it, Cassidy, all three of them. And anyone that tries to help him is asking for a whole heap of trouble. What do you mean by that? Just what I said. First, old Brady's boy disappears from Red Dog, taking a whole parcel of grub from the folks that have been keeping him. And all of a sudden, you show up, Brady's old partner. Wait a minute. You mean little Eddie? Little? Eddie Brady is 16, Cassidy. He's got a gun, and that makes him as big as any man you'll ever want to meet. You uh, don't know nothing about this, huh? I give you my word, Sheriff. It's all news to me. Well, I hope so. If we catch the boy, we'll probably find out where his pa and those other two convicts are hiding. That grub and medicine he took was for them, and no mistake. Uh, medicine? Yeah, for his pa, I reckon. Hardshell was hit by the fire of one of the guards as he went over the wall. He was seen to fall, but he got up and kept going. We don't know how bad he was hit, but it sure didn't do him no good. I see. Well, we'll be riding, Cassidy. Sorry to bother you. That's all right. All right, boys. Of the boy or them coyotes we're after, you might tell one of my deputies in Red Dog. Come on, boys, let's ride. Good luck. I'm afraid your ex partner's in a mighty bad fix, Hobby. Yeah, but it isn't him I'm worrying about as much as that kid of his, Eddie. We gotta find him, California. Find him? How? Chances are Hard Shell and those other two are hiding out in one of the old claims we used to work years ago. The boy would know about them, but nobody else in these parts would like to remember them after so many years. Let's have a look at a few of them. Well, this is about the fourth place we've looked, Hoppy, and not a sign. Yeah, well, there are a few others. Say, wait a minute. There's an old cabin, I recall, where we used to cash grub. About a mile further up in the hills. Come on. There's the cabin, all right. Dropped by somebody. Yeah. Maybe when he heard us coming, he... there's someone behind us. Don't move. Don't move or I'll kill you. This shotgun won't miss. Take it easy, Eddie. Mind if we turn around and face you? Get your hands up, both of you. All right, turn around. My, you sure have grown. Remember me? Yeah. Hop along, Cassidy. So you've turned against Pop, too, huh? The sheriff had to get you to help run him down. Now, hold on, Eddie. I'm not working for the sheriff. My partner, California, and I came up here looking for you. Why? To take me back to Red Dog so my father can starve to death or die of his wounds? No, because you can't help your father. And you're ruining your own life. It's my life. And I'll do what I doggone please with it. The law isn't going to grab Pop, not if I can help it. And nobody's going to stop me. Eddie. Dad's a good guy. He shot that crooked polecat in self-defense and they sent him to prison for it. It was wrong. And he ain't going to take him back. Eddie. Get out of here. Get out of here before I forget what good friends we used to be and kill both of you. 
Get going. Okay, Eddie. Come on, California. Well, we sure found Eddie all right, and we let him go. I could have jumped him as we left. I know. I wanted him to get away, California. Oh? Pull up. It's no use taking the boy back by force. He'd only run off into the hills again. I guess the only way to save him is to, well, capture Hardshell Hank and those two thugs with him. That's a mighty interesting proposition. Just how do you figure we're going to do that? Wait. Listen. Eddie must have had a horse tethered back in the woods. That's what I figured. Come on, we're following him. Now, not too fast. I want him to get a good start. That's why I let him get away. If he knows where Hardshell is hiding, I think he does. He'll lead us straight to him. Oh, doggone, we plumb lost his trail on these rocks, Hoppy. I told you we should have followed him closer. No, we got to give him time. Seems to me he's heading straight as an arrow the last four or five miles for that mountain dead ahead. See, way off there? Well, yeah, but that don't mean nothing. He might turn off a dozen times before he got there. He might, but I don't think so. That's old Smokestack Mountain. Hardshell and I made our last strike there. Other miners before us mined that old mountain so thoroughly, the whole thing is almost hollow with shafts and passages. You think they might be hiding out there? We can ride over and find out. Come on. You blasted young idiot. Why didn't you take some of that grub with you and you hightailed it from the cabin? I'm sorry, Mr. Griggs, but I wanted to get here as fast as I could to warn you. This better hop along, Cassidy. Let the boy along, Griggs. Eddie, you should have never come here in the first place. You should have stayed in town. I couldn't, Dad. I knew you'd been shot. And, and if you don't get us more grub, he's liable to starve, see? I... I don't dare go back to the cabin, Mr. Griggs. If Hoppy through the posse... Would... I don't care where you get it. Just get it. To make doggone sure nobody follows you here. Do you understand? Don't worry. Why shouldn't I? How do I know Cassidy didn't double back and follow you here? He couldn't. Not the trail I left on those rocks. You better be right. Let him alone, Eddie. Eddie... Pile up more of these old dead leaves around me. I'm cold. Never mind. I'll do it. Get going, boy. We need grub and more kerosene for that lamp. You hear? Kerosene. I, I'll try. That better? Yeah, thanks. I don't want Eddie mixed up in this, you hear? I don't want you to ask him to help us. It ain't right, Griggs. Right? What are you talking about? It's our lives. He's got to help us. Where's Rico? Standing guard at the mouth of the upper shaft. I'm going up there now. The chances are there won't be nobody coming from this side of the mountain. But you keep your eyes on the mouth of the shaft over there, understand? Sure. Rico and I'll cover the main approach. If that Cassidy hombre and his pal did follow Eddie, we'd blast him before they get halfway across the clearing. I might not remember. We shoot the kill. <laughs> Now back to Hop Along Cassidy and Dead or Alive. While riding home from the Amarillo Rodeo, Hoppy in California learned that three escaped convicts are hiding out in the rocky terrain near Red Dog. One of them is Hoppy's former partner, Hardshell Hank Brady. Hoppy's on the trail of the convicts now, hoping to find them before Brady's young son, Eddie, gets into trouble trying to help his dad escape. Hoppy has narrowed down the search to Smokestack Mountain, a jagged peak that he and Brady used to mine. As soon as we climb over this last ridge, we'll have a clear slope all the way to the foot of Smokestack Mountain. Well, how are we going to tell if Hardshell and those other two convicts are holed up there? That is, before they start shooting at us. We're not. When they start pumping lead, we'll know. Mm, sounds plumb dangerous. Well, hunting an outlaw is a little risky sometimes. And hunting three of them is three times as risky. Yeah. There. You can see the foot of the mountain through those trees. Yeah. Looks like the trees run down just halfway. There's quite a piece of clearing before you get to the base. I know. Those black openings all up and down the bare wall of the mountain used to be mine shaft entrances. If I'm going to be a sitting duck, at least I'd like to be in a shooting gallery where I'd get paid for it. <laughs> You're just waiting to be coaxed. 
Come on. Well, okay. California. If those men are there, we'd make fine targets. Well, if you're planning to cross that clearing to get into that lower mine shaft, we'll make even finer targets. I don't propose any such thing. We're going around. Oh, well, why didn't you say that before? Getting my goose pimples up this way. There are a couple of abandoned shaft openings on the other side. Where the woods go clear to the base of the mountain. Come on. This hole in the ground? The shaft winds up and around, crosses most of the main tunnels. Let's go. Quiet. California. That faint glow up ahead. Yeah. Someone with a light around the turn of the shaft. Listen. There's someone there, all right. Come on. What are you going to do? The only thing we can do. Rush him. All right, get set. Come on. Don't move any of you. We got you. Get your hands. Why, it's just one man laying on the ground. Hard shell. Don't grab for anything. It's me. Hop along, Cassidy. So it's you. Where are the others? Get them up to your cupboard. Well, I guess that answers my question. Get their guns, Rico. Hey, see, see. Since when are you lined up with the law, Cassidy? We're not with that posse, if that's what you mean, Hank. You got us plumb wrong. So you ain't with the posse, huh? Well, you better wish you was, because I'm going to drill... Riggs, you fool. Put down that gun. Why? Don't you see they're the one chance we got? What? What do you mean? Keep them as hostages. They, they'll cover our getaway. Hmm. Hey, I think maybe Hardshell Hank has got something there. Well, maybe... Okay, Rico, tie him up, both of them. Yeah, with pleasure. Greg, as soon as these hombres is hogtied, you you and Rico get back to the upper shaft. And keep your eyes open. There might be uh, might be more coming. Reckon you're strong enough to keep them covered, Hank? I'm still strong enough to pull a trigger. going to listen to no more of this, Hoppy. You and your partner just lie there quiet. I'm tired of hearing your palaver, and I, I mean business. <coughs> okay, Hardshell. It seems to me you ought to be seeing a doctor. Worried, ain't you? If you don't care about yourself, you might think what you're doing to that boy of yours. What kind of a father are you? Why, heaven, shut up. I told you once already. All right, Hank, all right. I was just thinking of the time when you and I worked side by side in these diggings. Remember how you planned and dreamed of the things you were going to do for Eddie? Send him to college back east. Happy! Happy, I'm warning you! And then you had to turn killer. No, it was self-defense. I swear it, Happy. Was killing that prison guard self-defense? It was that gun-crazy polecat Griggs. I didn't even have a gun. Not then, anyway. But it's hanging her all in for now if we're caught... I, I know I'm finished, Happy. After I was hit, I, I told the boys to head out here. I I figured if I had to die, I'd die here. In the free air of the hills, not in prison. Yeah, but what about that boy of yourn? You're coming out here, ain't done him no good. Why don't you send him to his mother's folks back east? With what? You're worth $500. Huh? Dead or alive. So that's it. A reward out for me, huh? Hank, believe me, I didn't come here to help run you down. I came here just to save Eddie from more trouble. If you'll cut us loose and let me take you in, I promise you'll get every cent of that reward. Yeah, big-hearted, ain't you? Well, let's face it, Hank, you're through. You have nothing to lose, and your son has everything to gain. Happy. Happy, are you on the level? You ever known me to go back on my word? All right. I... I'll take your word, Happy. But Eddie... Eddie mustn't know it's blood money. I promise you he won't. We'll tell him you saved it and hid it away for him. <laughs> All right, Ed Jover. Ed Jover, both of you. I'll, I'll cut you loose. Good man. 
Hank, uh, can you reach me? Yeah. There. Your hands are free. Thanks. Give me that knife. Uh, well, that takes care of the rope around my ankles. Hold still, California. Yeah. There, your hands are loose. In your ankles. Okay, get up. Riggs! Don't make a move, you two. I'll give you what I just gave our pal, Hardshell. Devil crossing the coyote. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's finish him. Wait a minute. Listen, someone's coming. Pop! Pop, I got some grub. I... Just put the stuff down and drop that shotgun. Eddie! Bob, what have they done to you? Eddie, I... Rico, get his shotgun. She... Run, Eddie. What's that? Here. Uh, uh, Pop, just... California, grab Rico. I've taken care of Griggs. Hang on to Rico's gun hand. I'll get him. Get Rico. Good work, Hobby. The lamp, that lamp smashed. These leaves are on fire. Eddie, get out of here. California, carry hard shell out. I'll take care of these other two. Those rotten timbers are catching fire. Get out. This mine will be a furnace in a minute. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy. <laughs> I know how you feel, Eddie. Your dad was a good man. Yeah, and I'm sure glad he lived long enough to tell you it was Griggs that shot him and not us. Why did you have to save those two swine? Why didn't you leave them in there to burn? Listen. Sounds like the sheriff's posse heading this way. Yeah, I figured they'd be seeing that smoke pouring from the mountain by now. <laughs> It was sure nice of you two riding with me all the way to the railhead, Hoppy. <laughs> We're proud to do it, Eddie. Yes, sir, it was a real pleasure. Shucks, with you all dressed up in them new duds, I plumb felt like one of them railroad porters carrying the boss man's bags. <laughs> oh. No fooling. I'll never forget what you two fellas have done for me. It's not us nearly so much as it was your dad, Eddie. I know. All aboard? <laughs> well, better climb aboard, Eddie. I know you'll like it back east with your ma's folks. I hope so. Goodbye, Hoppy, California. Goodbye. So long. Good luck to you. kind of delayed getting back to the home ranch, but I guess it was worth it. Yeah, I reckon it was. Eddie looked mighty spry in them new eastern style clothes. <laughs> Brand new suitcase, ticket to Boston. Yeah. A bank book showing a nice balance. <laughs> yes, sir, I reckon it was worth it, all right. Best of all, California, he's got proud memories of his dad. Of course, we had to tell him it was his dad who'd hidden the money away for him. Of course. He'll never know that it was his dad's blood money that paid for all that. Funny thing. What? Nobody else seems to know it either. Huh? What do you mean, nobody else seems to know it? Oh, I was just talking to the sheriff a couple of days ago after he brought those two polecats into Red Dog and we was waiting in town to testify at the coroner's inquest. What's so funny about that? It's what the sheriff said. Said? About what? The reward money, which you told Hardshell Hank was posted for him. Five hundred dollars, dead or alive. Oh. I just happened to mention it to Sheriff Thompson. He just looked at me and asked me what I was talking about. There wasn't any reward. Not a dime. I see. He said that, huh? That's what the man said. Well, what do you know? It uh, kind of gave me a idea. Gave you an idea? I hope you were kind to it. It was in a strange place. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shucks, Hoppy. Why don't you come right out and admit it? That there $500 come right out of your own pocket. The exact amount of the prize money you won at the Amarillo Rodeo. Well, why not? Wasn't it worth it? It made Hardshell feel that he was a some good to that boy of his. He loved that boy, California. Yeah, I know. 
Well, it gave Eddie a warm spot in his heart for old Hank. Gave him a feeling that his dad had been thinking of him and trying to provide for his future. In fact, 500 is a downright cheap price for the proud feeling that Eddie will carry with him for the rest of his life. Goodbye from Hopalong Cassidy. We hope you'll be back with us soon when Hoppy will again bring you more adventure and excitement. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Dead or Alive was written by Howard Swart. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production.